So I was in a Twitter conversation a couple days ago about Stanley Kubrick, and we may actually may have actually inspired a live stream on the subject. We'll see. I'm in negotiation with my people as we speak. Perhaps we'll be live streaming on Stanley Kubrick's and some of the other classic films and classic directors. So stay tuned. But you know, we were we were discussing what the what the best Stanley Kubrick films were. I forget how it actually got started. I think one guy was talking about 2001. Um, and I mentioned for me, the one that was the least seen was actually Paths of Glory. Now that is, that is for my money, the best war film ever made. It is not as widely seen as some of the other, other movie mentioned. One guy was talking about, um, 2001, obviously, and then there's a whole list of other really classic films, Clockwork Orange, The Shining, Barry Lyndon, Barry Lyndon I've never seen, um, Paths of Glory. But Paths of Glory, for my money, that is the best war film ever made. The second best war film ever made is Saving Private Ryan. Now, Saving Private Ryan isn't the best because it doesn't hold together completely well as a movie. But the first 20 minutes to half an hour of Saving Private Ryan, the landing on the beach at Omaha Beach, is the absolute, far and away, the best sequence, war sequence ever filmed. By far, nothing else ever even comes close to that. But the entire movie doesn't necessarily hold together. So Paths of Glory sort of beats it out. And it was just interesting to me that it's not as widely seen as many of Stanley Kubrick's other other works. It stars Kirk Douglas. It's a classic film. It's a brilliant film. Um, but we were talking about some of the other movies in the... Uh, you know, Eyes Wide Shut got mentioned. That's probably actually the worst Stanley Kubrick film. I saw that with my wife in New, in, in New York, actually. And it's interesting because my wife is half English. <laughs> and the, the, the perfect metaphor for the film is that the whole film is supposed to take place in New York. And Stanley Kubrick, by that point in his life, was so, just didn't care. And the interiors are all shot in London. And it's, if you've been to London, and I've been to London a few times, it's, and you've been to New York City, it's really, really obvious. There's no mistaking that it is not New York City. They don't, the interiors in London and the interiors in New York don't look anything alike. So it's, it's kind of indicative of the entire movie. He just sort of didn't care at that point. He had signed up to two. At the time, people don't remember this now probably, but Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman were the two biggest movie stars in the world at that time. So he had the two biggest movie stars in the world signed up to work with him just by virtue of his reputation as a genius. And he made a kind of what I consider a pile of junk. There are interesting moments in it, to be sure. That's the thing when a really talented director, when a really talented director even does a misfire, sometimes there's a lot of really interesting sequences just because. There's this freaky scene where they go... I guess it's a satanic cult or something in the movie where they go downstairs and they're worshiping. They're, they're in some cult house. And it's really, really, really weird and very, very interesting. Classic Stanley Kubrick, actually, is as interesting as any sequence in any movie. But the entire movie is more or less a pile of junk. And that's a perfect metaphor for the film. You know, it's supposed to take place in New York. And it, if you've been to New York, you've been to London, it's really obviously not New York. It's really odd. It doesn't look anything like New York City. It doesn't look anything, you know, there's no mistaking the interiors as London. Um, and that's kind of indicative of where he was at. He just didn't care at that point. But there are a lot of brilliant films that we were talking about in the Stanley Kubrick, um, in his list of, in the Stanley Kubrick canon. There were movies that I had completely forgotten about until we had the conversation. For example, Dr. Strangelove. Now that's a classic black comedy of the 60s, anti-war. Um, I had completely forgotten that movie existed until we were discussing it. I've completely forgotten about Lolita. Again, another classic film. Clockwork Orange I never forgot about. Clockwork Orange is, uh, you know, somebody, somebody in the, the Twitter feed mentioned that it's too weird. It's good weird. It's weird in the way that, you know, in high school we were obsessed with that film. There was a period in, where I was in high school where every single time you'd hang out at somebody's house, the, the agenda was, you know, smoke weed and watch Clockwork Orange for a period of about four months. That's, that's every, every time you go to somebody's house, what do you want to do? Well, let's get, let's get stoned. Okay, granted. And then what? Well, let's watch Clockwork Orange. Well, then we watched it last week and we watch it over and over again. So, I don't know. It's a really, really, really interesting film, actually. I, lo I love Clockwork Orange. 
So we'll see what happens. Um, if you have any opinions on the Stanley Kubrick films, let me know. Um, all, almost all of the movies are great. The only thing I dissented of, and again, there were movies I forgot about. Spartacus, I forgot about that. Um, the only thing I dissented of is the guy said, one of the guys was mentioning Full Metal Jacket. Full Metal Jacket is not, the first half of film, Full Metal Jacket is brilliant. And then I'm not even sure what happens to the movie. It just totally falls apart when they go to Vietnam. It's like two separate movies, and the second movie is lousy. So, um, you know, let me know what you think. What, what's your opinion on Stanley Kubrick as a director? And if you're interested in signing up for the stream, let me know. Um, I don't know for a fact we're going to get this stream up and running, and we're going to talk about a couple other directors too, maybe, uh, maybe Quentin Tarantino, Scorsese was mentioned. So we'll see what happens. But, you know, sound off. Let me, let me know what your favorite Stanley Kubrick movie is and why. And maybe we'll start a full-on full discussion about the subject. That's all for now. 